This is Twit. A side channel in Titan. The guys at Ninja Lab performed a classic side channel attack on Google's Titan FIDO U2F security key. By watching it work while monitoring its electromagnetic RF radiation, they successfully extracted its embedded, super secret, deliberately designed to never be extracted private key. Yeah. Is it the same private key on all the Titan keys? No, each no, key each has, key its, has own. its own. Of course. Yeah. Yes. But the whole point is all of the crypto is done on key. Right. So it never exposes that private key. And once you have it, then you are 100 percent able right. to spoof the presence of that key. Do you have and to have physical access being, to the key? Yeah. Okay. So I'll, okay. I'll, I'll explain all this in a second. We, we've talked about side channel attacks a lot in the past. You know, sometimes the power drawn by a device while it's performing cryptographic operations will fluctuate a little bit. Sometimes the power supply, we talked about this, on a computer might emit different sounds. Or perhaps the timing required to perform an operation will vary. It could be anything. The coolest way of stating the goal of avoiding any possibility for a side channel is that that nothing about the behavior of a device should vary as a function of any internal secret bits. So taking timing as an example, the time required to perform some operation, typically the pattern of conditional jumps taken in the code, should be completely independent of the secret being kept. That is, you, you should never have a jump taken or not based on bits of a secret key. That would be just really bad. So the bits of the secret key must not cause the algorithm's code path to vary as like one of the base requirements for avoiding side channel attacks. The, case, the fact is, some things are feasible to hold constant, but others, I would argue, much as I argued like against Intel's claim of having a ransomware detector <laughs> in their processor last week, I would argue that some things really do fall below one's ability to control, such as the instantaneous electromagnetic radio frequency radiation of an integrated circuit that's doing the work. Yeah, you can't so really, here's what the, I guess you could wrap it in tin foil. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the problem is, you know, then you unwrap it. And right, right. Like, I mean, yeah. like, you know, even if you put a lid, like a lid on it, well, you pop the lid and, you know, and there it is. So the, the, the Ninja Labs guy said, the Google Titan security key is a FIDO U2F hardware device proposed by Google, available since July of 2018, as a two-factor authentication token to sign into applications, for example, your Google account. They said, our work describes a side channel attack that targets the Google Titan security key's secure element. And that's the NXP, which used to be Philips. They renamed NXP A700X chip by the observation of its local electromagnetic radiations during, and they have here ECDSA, which of course is elliptic curve uh, DSA signatures, the core cryptographic operation of the FIDO U2F protocol. In other words, an attacker can create a clone of a legitimate Google Titan security key, period. To understand the NXP elliptic curve DSA implementation, find a vulnerability and design a key recovery attack. We had to make a quick stop on RIA, R-E-R-H-E-A. That's the NXP J3D081 
Java Card Smart Card. They said that is freely available on the web. This product looks very much like the NXP A700X chip and uses the same cryptographic library. Re, as an open Java card platform, gives us more control to study the elliptic curve DSA engine. So that was very clever. They realized that these two chips, the one they knew nothing about and the one they could know everything about, were very similar. So they trained themselves up using the open source, full everything is known about it version, and then cross-applied that to the one they didn't know anything about. They said, we could then show that the electromagnetic side channel signal bears partial information about the elliptic curve DSA ephemeral key. The sensitive information is recovered with a non-supervised machine learning method and plugged into a customized lattice-based attack scheme. Okay, so they said, finally, 4,000 ECDSA observations were enough to recover the known secret key on RIA and validate our attack process. It was then applied on the Google Titan security key with success, this time by using 6,000 observations, as we were able to extract the long-term elliptic curve DSA private key linked to a FIDO U2F account created for the experiment. In other words, the golden goose, the keys to the kingdom. Then they said, as a cautionary note, they said, Two-factor authentication tokens, like FIDO U2F hardware devices, primary goal is to fight phishing attacks. Our attack requires physical access to the Google Titan security key, expensive equipment, custom software, and technical skills. Thus, as far as our study goes, it is still safer to use your Google Titan security key or other impacted products as FIDO U2F two-factor authentication token to sign into applications rather than not using one. And by the way, the Ubico uses the same Philips chip. So uh, it was conjectured that it would be subject to the same side channel attack. They said, nevertheless, this shows that the Google Titan security key and other impacted products would not avoid unnoticed security breach by attackers willing to put enough effort into it. Users that face such a threat should probably switch to other FIDO U2F hardware security keys where no vulnerability has yet been discovered. And I'm thinking, well, okay, but it hasn't been discovered until it has been. So the well, point is, also, don't let bad guys, you know, yes. take your <laughs> take your Google Titan and security if they do, key. If you lose control of it, just deauthorize it, and then they yes. can't do anything with it. Uh, yes. Every single every uh, dongle related site that I use my YubiKey on yes. has the ability to remove a YubiKey and add a new YubiKey. I've done it many times. It's, it, I mean, the, the saving grace on this is they have to have access to the key. Right, yeah. right. And, you know, some secrets cannot be kept. And the fancier the system is that tries, the more likely it is to have some behavior that gives it away. Uh, you know, unlike a, t a time based one time token, which uses symmetric cryptography, where each end needs to share a private key, systems like FIDO and for and also my own Squirrel use asymmetric public key cryptography where the user holds their private key and the remote ends holds their public key. This significantly reduces the risk to the user and to the system since the public keys never need to be kept secret. The takeaway for this hardware token hack is not to be too glib about the idea that the hardware token's private key cannot possibly be extracted. It clearly can be if someone is sufficiently determined and, as you said, Leo, 
if you uh, you like you accept the challenge of some hacker who says, "Oh, let me borrow your." I don't need your like, key. No. Do you? <laughs> yeah, don't 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 let them have your key. You wouldn't give no. them your house that key. Would, uh, don't give them your, your Titan key either. That would be a bad idea. Yeah. Just borrow um, your house speaking, key for five seconds. It's, I'm, <laughs>